Hi, my name is Tom Updegrove, and I recently cleared the CPENT exam. In fact, achieved the score of over 90. Uh, so I also achieved the LPT master certification. And I tell you, uh, I really enjoyed this course, and uh, I was asked to say a little something about it, maybe help some people that are considering it or in the course now, um, and maybe it be some benefit uh, to you. I kind of get into information technology. Actually, I get into information technology uh, in the military. I was a, um, a microwave communications technologist, uh, but. Um, after I got out of the military, I, I actually got into uh, martial arts and uh, uh, didn't really pursue information technology until about uh, 2000. And, and in 2000, um, I got my MCSE, my CCNA, uh, and uh, started to develop a little consultancy. Um, even back then, uh, we were thinking about cybersecurity, but it was really up until maybe uh, 2010, 2012, in that, that two year period, uh, I got introduced to uh, certified ethical hacking uh, through uh, uh, Larry Greenblatt and Ralph Aismandia. Uh, I got the foundations, you know, of uh, how to uh, scan a network, how to snip a network, uh, how to exploit machines, uh, learn about Nmap and Wireshark and uh, Metasploit. And, um, uh, you know, it took a lot, it took uh, some time really to develop my skill set with the tools and so on. Uh, but uh, as my consultancy developed, um, I got to really apply my defensive skills uh, for customers who, uh, I'm now doing uh, managed services for them. Um, I get a chance to um, uh, 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 understand the vulnerabilities on the network um, and how we could protect customers you know, from. So somewhere around 2012, 2013, uh, we were asked to teach uh, CEH at Hacker Holding. Okay? Uh, that was pretty cool. That was a, that was. Um, uh, really uh, great experience, yeah, being able to roll out uh, labs and everything. We had no eye labs back in those days, so we had to build labs, man. Well, everybody had uh, uh, their own uh, laptops and so on. And kind, of, kind of a cool experience. So, it's a little bit about uh, me as a uh, cybersecurity professional. So I heard about the course um, a few years back. Uh, at um, Hacker Hold It, actually, Jay Bavisi was uh, talking about the CPEN program. And I was talk, telling him that uh, I thought the ECSA was uh, kind of a bear. Um, and it just recently kind of cleared that. He said, no, no, uh, CPEN is way, way, way beyond it. Um, uh, kind of similar in some ways, but definitely much, much, much more uh, stuff there. Uh, so really, I guess when uh, somebody says um, it's the most advanced program, the most advanced penetration testing program in the world, um, that has to get your attention. Huh? Even as a kid, um, I love puzzles. Um, it's the analysis of a problem, you know, the finding of the solution and that honor that feeling of satisfaction when you actually solve it. Something about uh, tapping into your own innate intelligence that uh, is um, just really, I don't know, enjoyable. It's kind of an enjoyable experience, okay? So um, at some point, because um, uh, I am a CEI, a certified um, uh, EC Council instructor, um, typically, my specialties are ethical hacking, certified network defender, essential series. I mean, anything kind of related to security. Uh, but uh, ethical hacking really is kind of my specialty. Um, and uh, when I was offered the course uh, uh, to give a go at it, um, I jumped at it. Um, why not? Although, I might say, um, it was intimidating. Uh, there's a lot there, 
you know, when somebody says the world most advanced, uh, you know, you doubt yourself. Okay, can I do that? Um, I mean, the course comes with uh, a lot of material. There is um, the ebook. Uh, you have a video series, uh, certainly have the um, iLabs. Um, I like the way they were kind of uh, in the iLearning uh, series. Um, I can be uh, going through the video and um, at some point it'll say tap into the labs and instead of having to go to um, iLabs and then back again, you can uh, navigate right from the um, uh, from the video into the iLab and okay, that was pretty cool uh, iLabs are excellent I thought um, uh, the instructions are very clear the way the labs work the way the whole background the way the the VMs worked um, definitely um, iLabs have come a long way uh, and it's a great opportunity you know to um, uh, make some of the tools and the techniques and procedures kind of work. Yeah. So, um, for me, uh, I'm a slow learner. Um, uh, it takes me a while to, to, I might have to go over something once or twice. Okay? So, the process, really uh, preparing for the exam, uh, honestly, probably took me a year, uh, took a while. Um, why? Because you, know, you got all kinds of things going on in your life. You, know, you got uh, family, um, other activities, uh, work. Uh, you know, run a full-time uh, managed service security consultancy, and that, that takes up a lot of time as well. Uh, so it depends. Sometimes things get really busy. You know, but uh, I would say that um, uh, I got very serious, probably. Uh, starting around uh, February of, of 2020 uh, and probably for the last three months leading up to taking the exam uh, any spare minute any time I had um, and the problem with a course like this is that um, for me it takes me a couple hours to actually get in the state of mind into the mood um, um, where I don't know I'm processing that information uh, so, 10 minutes, you know, nothing. It takes a while to kind of just get settled. Get your mind settled, you know, because um, it's, it's actually a, a, a very deep state uh, that uh, you need to be into to see your way through um, all, the, all the elements, all the connections. So you have the ebook, right? You have um, the, the, the iLabs, of course, um, the videos of that. Um, but ultimately, when you give through all that material, and that's a lot of material, and a lot of hours spent there, um, you eventually get to uh, a 30-day uh, cyber range. And that cyber range starts ticking, you got 30 days. And really, at the end of the cyber range, you should schedule it to take your um, exam. Uh, that would be the procedure. Okay? Um, I actually extended my 30 days to a second 30 days, um, simply because things happen. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be all at once. I don't know, I really, I don't know if anybody could actually just take a 40 hour course on CPEN and then go take the exam and actually do great. I mean, I mean maybe. Um, I love this. I love to meet you. Okay. So anyway, that's my approach. Uh, slow but sure um, was the approach to it. Um, the um, exam itself can be taken in a 24-hour, uh, a one-block 24-hour period, or two 12-hour periods. Okay. I suggest taking the two 12-hour periods because. You'll gather a lot of information, you'll get a lot of stuff, but you'll get stumped on a lot of things as well. So you can spread that out. Um, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the next day, it could be a two days, three days, as long as it's done inside the 30 day period and you still have time to um, write your pen test report. And I'll tell you, the pen test report is a very, very important part of the overall score. Okay, so. Uh, don't go light on that at all. I think that that pretty well, you know, um, to a degree. Um, a lot of work, 
um, a lot of um, um, learning, uh, a lot of thinking, uh, a lot of um, putting aside other things. Okay? I don't think I uh, watch uh, any television uh, you know, tour, especially during that last three month period, you know, uh, prepping for it. So that's my story. I think hands down, it was the time, uh, the 12 hours of uh, working on uh, the solutions uh, to the exam. Um, yeah, that, that certainly was hardest. Um, I definitely recommend taking the uh, two 12 hour sessions uh, because 24 hours is just too long of a run. You're gonna take breaks and you really need that time. I found uh, I need it all the time. Uh, allotted. I could have had really uh, had a little more time. I think I would have. Um, uh, I left a few things on the table. Uh, I, I could have got them a little more time. So certainly things to look out for. Um, I found the uh, Linux uh, uh, getting root in the Linux boxes um, uh, took some work, took some challenge, uh, took some time, some patience and discovery. Uh, so that's something that you want to bone up on. Uh, one, uh, satisfaction of passing, actually achieving uh, an LPT master score. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, and uh, that felt good to uh, be able to measure up. And, you know, I think uh, probably that, you know, just helped me uh, see how it fit into the consensus of the world. Uh, two, learning new and valuable skills, uh, especially um, learning uh, more about IoT and firmware and um, how to mount firmware, uh, how to you know, emulate it, um, uh, binaries, uh, working with uh, the debuggers and so on. I really like that part. Um, operational technology, you get a chance to really work more with Wireshark, it's one of my favorite tools. Uh, so. And I think really just uh, three, uh, being able to take those um, tools that I already knew, uh, but to learn new levels about them or how to combine them. Um, uh, Nmap really being the back end for um, other tools. Um, uh, there's one, there's a tool called Legion, which I actually use in the test, you know, which is kind of a little more, um, uh, script driven it allows you to take a lot of the the nmap scripts and and play with them so um i think those those are probably the three biggest things that um i took away from it you know a gain a gain of knowledge and better utilization of it so i don't know i'm a hands-on person um i really enjoyed um uh, uh, ceh um uh, practical uh, course, uh, taking the exam. Uh, I like that part. Uh, I've always liked that. In fact, uh, many times actually, uh, 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 back in the beginning, uh, I would really build the lab environment uh, because we didn't have iLabs in you know, 2012. Um, but um, I think the labs were really well done. Um, and there's a difference between the labs and again, uh, and the cyber range and uh, kind of explain that. Okay, so labs were real well done. There's a lot of um, information in there. Um, uh, when we did Active Directory, use all types of tools, uh, Bloodhound, um, um, PowerShell scripting, um, yeah, pretty, pretty extensive. Um, uh, same for uh, binaries, he had a lot of tools. Um, so uh, definitely, uh, uh, I think, uh, well put together. Um, so the the labs themselves are much like the iLabs in, uh, in CEH, uh, except that the the labs are um, more developed. You know, they just go deeper. Uh, you get more tools, um, and you'll go deeper with each of the tools. Okay? The cyber range, on the other hand, is entirely different. Um, you have to build yourself a. Um, uh, either a virtual machine. I used an actual um, full-blown computer uh, running Powered OS. Uh, you will get an open um, uh, 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 VPN 
connection to an actual live network okay, that you go in and you, you operate on. Uh, you've got um, uh, everything that, um, same type of machines that are in the exam, different, but same type. Okay. Um, uh, so um, what you really find out is that there is a, certainly a, um, a lot of uh, access control list and um, firewalling and uh, ping doesn't work. Uh, so you really need to take your tools and kind of uh, work them in ways that you would, I guess. Uh, usually I don't see that much difficulty the, the network is a lot more difficult than most of the networks that I, I tend to penetration test. Uh, still, um, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty um, uh, interesting, and uh, I think I, I drew a lot of experience from that. And I'd say there's like four, right? Uh, Nmap, of course, and I do use Nmap on a daily basis. Uh, um, I do uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, uh, security camera work, uh, and uh, you know, uh, MAP's a great way to lay them out. It's just um, uh, probably the fastest, simplest thing that you can do, right? Uh, Wireshark, um, another. I, mean, I look at them as reading and writing, okay? So uh, MAP writes to the network and injects stuff into it. You get responses back. Wireshark snips the network. It listens, okay, as to what's going on. A very, very important tool to have as well. Not only for uh, cybersecurity, but for network performance as well. Um, probably those tools are used more for network performance than they are even for cybersecurity, but um, a double-edged sword, you we'll say. Uh, Burp Suite, uh, or any uh, web application proxy, my, my choice is Burp Suite. Um, uh, and that gives you a little bit more into really what's happening in terms of um, HTML and the HTTP. Um, it's a much, you can understand the conversation a lot better. You can read it in Wireshark and you have aspect for it, but it's designed for web application uh, communication. So that's really the tool to use. Okay? And lastly, my brain. Okay? Um, because without those tools, without really understanding how the knowledge on how to do that, um, I'm not really able to um, uh, utilize them, right? Um, so I think that that would probably, from the course, drawing uh, different, some new switches and new uses of, uh, of MAP, uh, used a lot of, uh, of the, the um, uh, NMAP scripting engine, um, uh, there were some unique things. Uh, normally, I'm not looking at um, a, a SCADA system or Wireshark dumps, uh, so the protocol is a little different, but yet um, it's there. Uh, so uh, I kind of that part was kind of enjoyable. Um, uh, so on a day-to-day -day basis, okay, there's four of the tools that I use um, almost all the time, but. That's just one that's uh, way too early to tell. Um, I would suppose that, um, on my resume, it certainly is gonna uh, make it look better. Uh, but um, I already have a company. Uh, I'm not planning to, to really move uh, to work for another company. Um, uh, what I will say is that um, the, um, the confidence that I gained from uh, passing that and achieving um, you know, a high level with it, um, uh, certainly I think is helpful in opening doors for other things and other endeavors. And so, um, I don't know, I feel really good about it. Um, but there's really not much to compare. I mean, uh, I guess I could look at, uh, uh, CEH, Network Defender, um, ECSA, which no longer program, um, uh, a certified uh, pen testing professional, um, a progression for sure, you know, um, even really going down the ladder to uh, 
uh, ethical hacker essentials, you know, kind of like a good stepping stone. So definitely a progression up and up and up. Um, so the only program probably is close to uh, CPEN is uh, OSCP, uh, Offensive Security uh, Pen Testing Program. Um, the um, um, uh, most say actually CPAN is a much harder program. I don't know because uh, I haven't taken uh, OSCP, but I do have a gig coming up uh, where I've been asked to teach OSCP, and I'd like to take that on, uh, and I can really come back with a better evaluation of it. And, uh, that, so uh, until then, I really you know don't have much to say about you know how it compares to others. All I can say is that uh, uh, I learned a lot. Um, I feel really good about uh, what I took out of it, and it's really uh, uh, kind of fun taking the challenge and uh, and going for the golden ticket. Okay. Simple. Um, um, read the ebook completely a couple of times, many times you need to. Okay. Um, uh, you can load that thing on a mobile phone, uh, whatever. Um, uh, if you've got the video series, go through the entire video series. Um, uh, if uh, you took the class live and they recorded it, you know, look at the recordings. Okay? Do every lab. Okay? Do every lab until you can do the lab blindly. Okay? Uh, what I mean by that is not following the directions. Okay? Just close the directions. Okay? What's the objective of the lab? What are you trying to do? And then um, uh, walk through the lab. Okay? Well, you can walk through the lab blindly uh, with simply an objective um, and achieve the, uh, the standards. Maybe even take the lab even further. Okay? A lot of times I like to just take the environment and then just um, create challenges out of that. Okay? So um, the environment is not uh, just um, something you, you can just do that particular lab you can try different and, and typically in the course they give you a lot of uh, options there in order, in order to do that but that's what I'm saying okay we're, get, we're really good at that yeah because that's what you need you need that kind of hands-on and kind of thinking and, and uh, kind of problem solving you know that it kind of gives you um, do um, uh, put aside time um, you need to prioritize uh, not only um, in, your, in your life, you know, but in order to be able to um, put the hours in, it really requires to um, understand the material. Um, if you don't understand something, go back at it. Yeah, you can, you know, um, you you can certainly um, uh, be that way when you when you're working it. Um, uh, other things is uh, I suggest taking the two by twelve approach rather than the one by twenty four. Uh, I think that having that break between session one and session two uh, gives you a little chance to regroup. Even twelve hours is difficult. I found that um, somewhere between the eighth and tenth hour, uh, I started to lose concentration. Um, you can take breaks, okay, but even so, um, and for me, you've got to be in that state of mind uh, where, I don't know, you see things. <laughs> if you're not in that state of mind, um, you, you'll be bombarded with uh, other thoughts, diversions, okay. Uh, I mean, they try to make the environment as such, you know, uh, but um, you know how it is. You can certainly um, get off track with something easily. Um, you are allowed to have a, a computer. Uh, you can need to be able to search the web. You do a lot of Google searching. Okay? Um, I would say um, uh, tips, um, spread it apart. Okay? Uh, I foolishly set the first um, attempt, um, first 12 hour attempt from 12 midnight to 12 in the afternoon. Um, found myself falling asleep actually like four or six in the morning so I don't think that's a really good way to do it okay? uh, so I requested that uh, I could start at say nine in the morning 
Uh, that went from nine in the morning to nine at night. Much, much better. Because um, that's my, I, I guess, my normal um, operating time of day. You know, I think my, my biorhythms were kind of like in there. Save your material. And they'll tell you, but uh, you might even write down your answers, okay? Because um, uh, in that uh, midnight to 12 in the afternoon, uh, as we came down to closing time, usually the last hour, I found the last hour uh, can be somewhat um, uh, anxiety producing, okay? Me, I'm a bad test taker. Um, I get a lot of anxiety. I, I probably from you know, as a kid, you know, taking tests. Um, but um, um, really good, um, fine throughout. But I find that last half hour, um, maybe last hour, uh, I had a couple machines I couldn't get, and it was like um, I probably you know I was so close to getting them, I just ran out of time, and uh, definitely you know a state of mind, I think. Um, I could have controlled my mind a little better, uh, but I think I could have got them. So my last piece of advice to you is uh, don't give up. Stick to it. And, um, um, it's a mental as well as much as an emotional task. Okay? Um, and as much as it is really a knowledge-based exam. So, um, uh, don't give up in your pursuit of it. Uh, that's probably uh, that's probably harder. I mean, once the exam starts, you're in it, right? But it's getting to that you know exam day. Um, turns out that um, uh, there aren't that many people have actually attempted the exam. Okay, so uh, so we're hoping to see more people do it. Okay, so um, set your goal, stick to it, suck it up. Okay, go for it. Okay? That's my final words. It's been a pleasure uh, sharing this with you. Um, God bless everybody.